It's early spring at Homemakers, zone 8 climate, temperate oceanic, and today we certainly have an oceanic day with some rain. The temperature is around 8 or 9 centigrade, the high 40s Fahrenheit, um, but we're in early April, which is a time of year when there's a lot of light, <laughs> normally. Uh, really though, the days are long. You know, the light levels are in where we are now are equivalent to late August, early September in terms of day length and sun height. So if you think and then look at the garden now and compare it to what it's like late August and there'd be a lot more growing, it indicates how this light potential is there to bring on a lot of growth, but not the warmth. It's the warmth that we're lacking at the moment. And here I've got some plantings covered with fleece and I want to show you how you can use fleece to bring things on in the early spring and get a really get a bit ahead because for example here these peas I'm growing them for shoots actually but it would be the same story different spacing and everything if you were growing them for pods to eat I'd, I'd then support them so they grew up this is a tall variety called alderman and these shoots are actually ready to harvest now we pick them like that that's already a, a little harvest so these peas I planted um, six weeks ago in very late February and they've just had the fleece over them like this sitting on top and it's quite good to do this in the rain because you can see how that actually wet weather makes the fleece heavier so it is weighing a bit more but then when it dries out it becomes very light and you can see how they're pushing it up as they grow so that is one option one way of using it if you were in a more frosty climate, it probably would be worth having some hoops under and we'll see that in a minute. So that it's just many ways of doing it. For me here, we're quite windy and having it without hoops, so it's right on the ground, means it doesn't blow away so much, basically. The wind sort of blows through it a little bit and over the top. But what the fleece is doing is keeping that quite cool wind off the leaves and allowing the plant to grow more it warms up when the sun is out it doesn't keep all the frost out but it warms up by day to encourage growth and similar story here just back end of this sheet is little beetroots so this is multi-sown beetroot i popped them in three weeks ago and they haven't grown a lot but what they've done is they've really got they've got their roots going they're established you can see by the color of the leaves quite green i'm really happy with them and you know they could be cropping as little beetroots to eat in about six weeks which is quite early and wouldn't have happened without the fleece cover and same story here except the harvest will be even earlier these lettuce were planted at the same time as the beetroot all different varieties and yeah they're looking really well um, this was beetroot in the winter then i spread compost so this is homemade compost on top and I just make a little hole in and through that a bit and the plants go in and I mean just to illustrate how we do it we'll be picking off these outer leaves as reject one at the bottom and then we start taking the outer leaves as the harvest so that's already a lettuce leaf that you could eat well I'll let the plants actually get a bit bigger first but just to give you an idea um, that it won't be long before we're harvesting lettuce from this plot and it's probably the fleeces brought forward the harvest by about two weeks i say the decision to make is how long to leave it on if you have fleece on too long and when it's really getting hot for those of you in lower latitudes or closer to the equator than here we're 51 north you would find that those could get a bit of heat stroke so if we towards the end of april here it'll it'll really warm up normally and I'll take this fleece off and then that, that's it it's done its job for the year I'm really only using it in this climate late March and through April <laughs> particularly useful and a similar th sort of thing going on here I'll quickly show you so for example you'll also see more clearly how plants can push the fleece up so we got plants at all different stages so the garlic was already growing when I put the fleece on and then I interplanted some radish between. <laughs> Actually, the garlic's doing quite a nice job of just supporting the fleece while the radish are growing. And, and as we come down here, then we're into sown radish direct with some carrots just emerging. So 
I'm using the fleece again, just a little bit of extra warmth in the day. It's not a huge difference, but it, it, it makes a difference. And, you know, with, with early sowings, you, you're always pushing the boundaries a bit. Certainly we are here. And it's got these carrots coming up and, and a bit more strongly, I would say, and healthily. You know, things that are in soil that's a bit warmer, they're more likely to resist pests and just get away more healthily. After this, we'll now go and have a quick look at some fleece. I'm going to take you on a little tour of the garden and see different beds using fleece in slightly different ways and also slightly different types of fleece. This one is quite thin. It's also three years old, actually. You can keep reusing it. And it's 25 gram square metre, which means it's quite light. And I'm going to show you next a quite heavy one. <laughs> This bed is, is all planted for, with lettuce. This is a small market garden here. We're selling salad bags. That's why there's a lot in case you're wondering. And the difference here to what we saw just now is that we have supported the fleece on hoops. And for two reasons. One is it's heavier fleece, 30 grams per square meter, weighs more. And that of itself is not a problem, but we've had quite hard frost last week, minus three, 27 Fahrenheit for quite a long time. And where, what I've noticed if when that happens, when fleece is touching leaves, they get damaged. It doesn't kill the plant, but if you're selling the leaves, obviously that's not good or want to eat them. And I also just want to say how we laid this out. These covers, these sheets are all two meters wide. That's about six and a half feet. And that's easily enough to span. These are roughly four foot and a bit 1.25 meter wide beds two meters is a really nice standard width for these covers and to get it all nice and straight like that well you just roll it out unroll it and then we, we're using stones uh, i find this so simple and quick and all you need to do is just like you see lift the stones up to get in the bed and you can see what's going on here and in fact, I'm very pleased with these. It's 18 days since we planted them and they were five week old lettuce at the time. So they were sown mid February and that's good steady growth for early spring. One other thing I'm noticing, having pulled it back, is dryness. The rain has not yet gone through the fleece. And that always is a bit of a question. Generally, I find that after a while it starts to drip down, but quite a bit is actually running down the sides as well. So that's one disadvantage of having it on hoops. Compared to flat, you'll get better infiltration of rain through the fleece. We'll now have a look at some pea shoots under fleece over there, again with hoops. And I'll just show you the difference and how upright they are. Here, it was only a week ago that we actually put these hoops up. Before that, the fleece was sitting on the peas growing, and that is possible, that can work. The reason we put the hoops in was because of the frost forecast, and it was certainly a very good forecast because it saved a lot of damage, because what it does when you have fleece or row cover higher over the plants like this, it mitigates the temperature difference. So when, say you have a frost at night, the cold air was falling down either side and not able so easily to get onto the plants. And I've got a few pea plants elsewhere in the garden which were hit quite hard by that frost and the leaves all went yellow, which is not to say they were gonna die, but it really set back. And this prevented that happening. So that was great having the hoop. In case you're wondering about these hoops, I was extremely fortunate and inherited them from a farm I was running in France. And I don't know what <laughs> the wire is exactly, but it's pretty thick. Um, they're just brilliant hoops. They're probably 40 years old and I just use them again and again. They're, they're only in the ground about six inches or even less actually, 12 centimeter. And as you can see how they're spanning the bed very nicely. And look at these lovely peas, um, all standing up proud and 
ready again for first harvest of pea shoots. And this is again 30 millimeter, 30 grams a square meter fleece, so quite heavy. And it's starting to get a little bit wet there. I'm going to be interested after this rain finishes, I have a look actually and see. I think on the whole, you, fleece is fairly moisture neutral because it's in spring weather like we've been having, you can have days of incredible wind that really dries the soil out. And so the fleece is helping on days like that to keep moisture in, whereas in rain like this, we're, we're losing a bit. So it's, I think that's fairly even, but the main thing it's doing for me is just keeping the cold at bay in the early spring. So I don't use fleece here from May onwards. I find it makes it too hot of an afternoon. The plants then actually struggle a bit. So you've got to work out according to your climate where you are. The bed that we're looking at here has brassicas, radish, turnips, rocket, all very fast growing early spring brassica plants. And they're much more robust and stronger leaved than say peas. And for that reason, actually, I haven't got any hoop as you can see. And you see how they're pushing the fleece up. We do occasionally loosen it a bit. I like to get it on pretty firm, um, not skin tight, but firm so that if you leave it too loose when you put it over plants without any supports, that is, it flaps around in the wind and it can actually damage the leaves more than having it fairly firm. And then these leaves are stronger than we might think. You can see how these radish here are pushing up the fleece and no, oh, they do right. Um, and also, actually, this is interesting too, because I'm seeing here how the, the compost mulch on the surface is damp and the rain has been going through. This is the 25 GSM, so it's slightly thinner. Rain goes through a bit better and because it's more or less flat. And I also brought along here this wire because it's the next grade down from the one I just showed you, the very thick hoop. And this is four millimeter high tensile wire. So high tensile means that it's got a bit of spring in it and sort of rigidity. And it's actually, this hoop, this one's a bit too long, but all you, if you buy a roll of this from a, a, like a store hardware and cut it to the length that you're happy with, and then all we do is just push it in like that. Keep going a bit, because that gives it firmness. And then, on the other side you do exactly the same and you've got your hoop you can see how this one's too long basically generally i'd aim to have it not too high uh, so four millimeter high tensile and just while we're here i'll also mention covering these plants new seedlings for me that's pretty much everything i plant in the early spring in our case from late February, early March, right through April gets a cover on it for a little while, just to help it get in going. It's that time when plants are most fragile and sensitive. I call it planting shock. They're, you know, they've gone from one place to another. Um, it's nothing to do with hardening off or anything like that, you know, because it happens in summer and autumn as well. It's just that stage of getting used to a new surroundings and having a bit of extra warmth and protection makes all the difference. And in contrast, Behind me, you can see, for example, this spinach, which was actually sown last August and has been growing fine through all this very same weather. And I'm not worried about covering that. And I'm not covering the broad beans behind because they, they got going and they're stronger plants, they're well established. So there's all those factors as well. And I certainly, you know, I'm not wanting to encourage you to think you have to use fleece all the time for new plantings any time or whatever it is. It's just very specific, but it does make so much difference at this time. And we just came to this one on the way. I now finally I'm going to show you the, the bed that's covered in mesh. <laughs> what I'm showing you in or over this bed is mesh, it's called, which is more durable, longer lasting, tougher, stronger than fleece. And it's been over this bed all winter. And the reason I wouldn't put fleece over it all winter long is we do get a lot of wind here and over 
say the five months that this is going to be covering the fleece will almost certainly get torn by wind at some point and the mesh has not this this mesh actually is six years old i've been using it quite a lot in that time and it, it has a a lifespan of 12 15 years in fact so it costs more it's more durable but it's longer lived and stronger and i'm gonna just show you again illustrating how it's not onerous to weight it down this has stood very nicely in some very high winds actually that we had 65 mile an hour gusts and part of the reason that it doesn't blow off is that some of the wind does blow through so it's not like total warmth in there but it's just protecting the plants enough to make a very worthwhile difference and it would also be very useful I've used this mesh like this it is a, an insect or a, a pest deterrent and we at sometimes have badgers here um, and rabbits and it keeps them off and the plants here actually were were put in last middle of October last year from September sowing we're now 8th of April today 9th of April so you can see they've been here a long time and we've picked um, around seven kilos actually 15 pounds of salad from this bed over the winter so th partly thanks to the mesh that you know that's up the figure a bit and enabled us to have some nice harvest and the biggest producer has actually been these lettuce which look quite small but that's because we picked them yesterday <laughs> we actually took um, over a kilo two and a half pounds off this bed yesterday afternoon just to give you an idea and it's little and often approach so mesh really good more for pests not for um, young seedlings so much fleece for little seedlings that just need that little bit of extra warmth and wind protection for the first month or so of their lives and i'd recommend any gardener who's getting into all this to you know just keep a stock of a um, some of this in your shed basically because you can then just bring it out at any time one other thing about storing it is particularly the fleece i in the shed where i store it i don't just leave a heap on the ground because if you do that it'll get full of mice in the winter they just love it and they'll make nests in there so i just got a, a batten of wood at sort of head height and we loop the rolls over that because we are then reusing them each year 12 15 years for the mesh the fleece maybe three four years it depending on thickness the one you don't want to get to avoid at all costs is the thinnest kind which unfortunately seems to be pretty much available a lot of people buy it and then they ask me well, how, how, how come this is any good it just falls apart almost as soon as you look at it and that's because unfortunately without knowing they've bought the thinnest grade which is 1717 grams per square meter so try not to buy that one uh, the 25 or 30 GSM and there are other options coming onto market now it's, it's worth keeping an eye out for new products and there's one actually just right in front of the camera there which is called Envirotect and that's a sort of a bit of a hybrid between mesh and fleece and I don't know yet I've only just started using it, how warm it's going to be it certainly is more durable than fleece and the last thing I mentioned actually is that you might have noticed some of my fleece is quite dirty and I find mostly the rain washes off the soil so when we're reusing year after year we, we never actually wash it or do anything like that mostly the rain sorts that out so we just get it out of the shed and put it on and that lets enough light through because what the fleece is all about is converting spare light to warmth warmth is what we're lacking at the moment we've got long days so have fun and experimenting with it a bit